this week on your mom's house. Oh, it was a good four. payday. It, it was, COVID was great for me. You know, it was bad for everyone. <laughs> I got to, tr I traveled so cheap. So wait, so what happened in Fukushima? You, what do you mean what happened? You know what happened. No, no, I meant <laughs> when you arrived. Why do you, why do you think I'm so goddamn tall? Radiation. They're like fat women, That's women so with true. facial hair, uh, ugly Old women. women. Old moms, women, moms, grandmas. Yes. Them. So, so porn true. is more pro women than fashion. Well, welcome. Welcome to your mom's house. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Sattva. Go to sattva, S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash the shit and get $200 off any mattress of your choice. I got a D-U-Y, baby. Oh, Tony Welcome Jones. to your mom's house. I'm um, very excited today. Is This is like, I don't normally get this excited about a guest, but this is, <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah. I'm amped the fuck up well, of course he's the ogest of the g's it's like uh, you know this you when you see today's guest you're gonna be like you guys are doing good you know <laughs> that we're top tier here one of my all-time favorites this is why your mom's house exists seriously um but there's uh there's so much and there's not a, enough time to get into everything so why don't we uh instead of um waiting just start with a very uh just you know open and clip and get to the show yeah um so i hear you buddy uh, are you ready for the open clip i'm pumped bro let's do it i am your slave i am your mindless obedient slave i have no will i have no mind i am your slave master oh she's beautiful so hot are you hard don't bring anyone <laughs> fucking to this. Your mom in the fucking stand. So welcome, hot. Welcome, welcome. welcome to your mom's house with Tom Segura. Tom mom Segura. Segura. And Christina Pajitsi. Welcome to your mom's house. people listening if they're just listening it's just I, we should just say there's a lady a beautiful lady well a lady in a dress older lady with a purse heels and you know not not the most traditional face um <laughs> who is uh just recording herself um i don't even know if it's a lady honestly that's mm. more of a dude thing to do what is to be like i'm your slave i think it's oh, a yeah. guy do you think it's a guy Oh, I'm sorry. Is that obvious? And I'm an idiot. God damn it! <laughs> that was a fun one. Sorry, yeah, it's okay. God uh, damn it! Do you guys know? <laughs> Have you heard of a Lenovo? Yeah, computer? yeah, they're very good. This is like the Lenovo of clips. Yeah, it kind of is. <clears throat> so. Well, I thought you were such a good actor. I oh, thanks. I can't thanks. tell. Um, yeah. So this uh, <laughs> this guy that's wearing a dress. Is uh, he's just saying like very and he he's saying like in a very creepy way. I'm your slave. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I'm very surprised you chose this for an opening clip because this is usually in my TikTok. Yeah, it's a, it's very much in your wheelhouse. So like I feel like you're finally coming to my side of the force in terms of what's amusing and funny. Uh, I just sometimes I don't play them because I think they're amusing <laughs> or funny. Sometimes I play them because I'm kind of freaked out by them. You know? oh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, I need to obey my master. Mm. I have no will. I have no mind. I am your mindless, obedient slave. I mean, it's such a bummer. It's a real bummer. Um, but I, I'll say this: got the leg swing down really well that well, the ladies do, and you know, that, slender legs, which is very difficult yeah. on a male. And found right sized shoes. Shoes are very hard to find on men. Yeah, like women's shoes. Found the right shoes. The dress, nice dress. Slamming. I like her handbag. Like, Handbag's great. Overall, it's yeah. a solid look. The earrings are good. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I wish the I wish she would open her mouth and enunciate a little more. I don't like the saying. Yeah, like this. I have no. That yeah. part wouldn't arouse me as a male uh, yeah. viewer. It's I don't know. It's the only thing that kept me from, from finishing. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. But the angle's good. Uh, the lighting's great. Uh, you can see her kitchen in the back. So, you know, she's she's handy around yeah. the kitchen. Like Overall, sweet lady. we just play this because we just wanted you to wake up and uh, <laughs> start the day right. Um, that was troubling. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know, because I'm trying to get into, there's so many exciting I things. Know, episode. I know, I um, know. A few ep- weeks back, uh, we were doing an episode, and our own Enny was doing his cap report, and uh, during the the cap report, he said that ED. That's so gay. Is gay. Um, <laughs> erectile dysfunction just means you know, ain't that straight. That you're not <laughs> straight. You're right, gay. right, and Heather and I uh, concur. We agree with any that ED means you're gay. ED, right? That any but any guy who's like, oh, I'm just having trouble with an erection. Show me what that cock. You just want to suck on a cock. You should try fucking a guy, yeah, yeah. Because most straight men, if they're with the right women, they they get it up. Oof. It's never. Oh, sure enough. And not not it doesn't bar like occasional erectile problems. That's yeah. not what I'm saying. Yeah, like if you consistently can't get a, a boner, it's because you're you're into dudes. Yeah, we're the dudes. Yeah. <gasps> so, wow, did you see that? Yeah. We both did that Synergy. at the same time. Yeah. Um, pretty cool. Synergy. <laughs> well, we put that out there and immediately heard from people that were <laughs> extremely offended. We even had the great uh, Stavi on here, and he was offended in Stavi the moment. Was yeah. so mad. Yeah, he was like, "This is so deeply hurtful." Um, <laughs> He let everybody know that it, it's it's not that. But he also said he was willing to try being gay. Um, <laughs> well, we got some listener feedback. Oh, okay. So here we go. Dear Tom and Christina, I find that there is some truth to what Christina was saying about ED being a gay issue. I'm a man who likes to party. Uh, so sexuality is a bit of a spectrum. So sometimes when I try to jump back into dogging chicks after riding pole for a couple months, I have trouble and vice versa. It's hard to jump from ham to sausage sometimes and your body reacts to it like hot and cold. It's sometimes hard to get your brain and dick working together after switch hitting. (laughs) Daniel. Wow, so ED is gay. Well, hold on. That's just one summary. That's enough. And he's Um, right. Big shout out to Daniel. Thanks for being (laughs) truthful, man. Thanks for being truthful. Another message. Hey, Jeans, after watching your episode, I realized that my erectile dysfunction was due to me being a gay. Um, I couldn't keep it up with my wife because she is a sexy goddess. Ooh. The first thing I did was search for the nearest dude to bang. It wasn't that hard. Ugly gays must be using Grindr because 47 minutes after watching the podcast, I was up close and personal with a hang down that would scare RPC to death. I took it and honestly... I was pretty proud of myself. Thank you for the life advice, Any Team, hashtag Team Any. That's from Vinny. <laughs> so to you, bro. Two another for two. guy. Wow, this is um, amazing. And then here's another one. I was remiss to find out this evening the exact moment that I had thought I had found out I was definitely not gay became the exact moment that I has now proven that I am in fact gay. <laughs> I was having a threesome, and I was on the bottom being ridden by a female. She said that she wanted to be doubly penetrated by her boyfriend. I consented. On the first failed attempt to enter, I felt a flaccid serpent-like penis through the thin vaginal wall and immediately lost my erection. This was a very clear indication to me at the time that I was, in fact, disgusted by a penis, even even when it's in a good, hot, squirting (laughs) vagine. Turns out I am gayer than five guys blowing ten guys. Anyway... Come down later for some moose soup, just glass and jean. Wow. I, I mean, who knew? That's pretty wild. We um, can I tell you something? We are we are the the music makers, the science makers. We figure shit out. And the, the other one he said is that PMS is cap. And I have to say, any when you said that, I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, I physically feel shitty because I have my period, but like I can choose my attitude. I don't have to be a, a cunt bitch, you know? That's right. So maybe PMS is cap too. It's just like the gays. Okay. <laughs> it's all. It's all. It's all about choices. It's choices. All about choices. Ed is cap. PMS is cap. Wow. PMS is cap. I I currently am menstruating and I'm choosing to not be a cunt bitch and it's working. You have been pretty nice today. Yeah. And I don't feel good. I feel terrible. 
I thought I had COVID this morning. I woke up. I'm like, I'm dying. Well, and I don't. I'm fine. If you're really being cool, what that mouth do? Oh, you know? stop. Ew, what that mouth do? Who mm -hmm. said that? You know who? What that mouth do? Doesn't give blowjobs? Real bitches. <laughs> Dick in the muds. Yep. <laughs> Real bitches. Real stupid, dumb, cunty women. <laughs> um, this is, by the way, something that I'm so excited to get into. <laughs> uh, I have so to, much going on in so the world. Much, so this is so exciting. Top to me. breaking story. This is something that I I noticed <sighs> out of my periphery. Perifer periphery periphery <laughs> dude um, i actually really had explosive anus <laughs> really that's really. diarrhea yeah I'm, I'm not periphery uh but yeah da dude yeah it's I, good to remember i really really have explosive anus yeah what a help that's the, the, if you've learned anything the only from acronym that's house. ever helped anything um <laughs> why did they teach us that in school i don't know so I noticed this very casually and, and it's something that is, you know, it's not gonna be that surprising, but then I, I, it picked up a little more and then I talked to the guys and they were like, oh yeah. So they had noticed it too, mm. which is that Robert Paul Champagne, um, one of the a absolute most important people on this show. Mm, the coolest uh, of the cool the guys. The coolest of the coolest guys of all time. Um, he, was that here? He was, oh, here. Oh, he get off. <laughs> um, Sir. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one of the greats. He has, little by little, leaving comments mm -hmm. um, on my page, on the YMH page, yes. on both Instagram and I think on Facebook, where he voices that he is upset most like with kind of everything here, but mostly with me. It's it's directed at you yeah. and some 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 jabs at me, but he'll say things like Christine should just divorce him and take his money. He's got no heart. And, Very, and I don't know why he's so upset. He, yeah, he he doesn't like me too, but but you especially. Yeah. He's really ramping up lately. So shave that dirty beard. This was on and a, then something talk. where I was posted on something about my and so he just wrote shave that dirty beard. Oh, then wow. he has a new nickname for me. Uh-oh. Yeah, his new nickname for me is uh, Ham Sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so he wrote in this one, he posted himself. What? What, look at that mask. That is That's absolutely creepy. terrifying. Um, <laughs> he. Uh, <laughs> I need to be fucked a lot, man. I created a Tom Segura in which... Lots of mayonnaise and ham and a pair of sunglasses, as he is a big ham anyway. Um, what, what is prompting this? I don't we know haven't what's prompting attacked him. It. We haven't done anything. Uh, it's just been the regular yeah. show, and we always, you know, we give shouts out to RPC. Yeah, we don't, we haven't changed anything on our end. I can't imagine. This was on a uh, fun times at, when I went to his premiere. That was a celebratory day. Yeah. Notice Tom Grin was not too happy. Oh, jeez. Bird is more funnier than drugged up Tom on booze and uppers. What? And then he went to his <laughs> second account and wrote phony. Ah. He has two accounts. He is so, he's so fired up. He's so fired up. Then. I, can I, I think he just wants your attention, Tom. Bert, never make the mistake of doing a movie with Tom Segura as he will grab all the glory and fame. You're getting better than him in comedy. And comedy, Tom. Now you're writing and skills and, and acting. He needs you so bad as his ratings are slipping bad. It's not funny anymore. <sighs> Dry toast over burnt. You can make it without him. Wow. I mean, yeah, it's. Where is this coming from? I yeah. just don't. I mean, I, I think he. Yeah, I, I'm going to come now. Yeah. Cut. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I think he wants your attention, Daddy. I think, may, I, I mean, I, you're maybe. not paying attention to it. Robert. RPC gets like this every now and then. Yeah, yeah, every now and when then. When you're not paying him the attention he deserves, he'll start acting up like this. So we need to, you need to stroke him a little, not that way, but like give yeah. him a little ego, give him some love. RPC maybe you're right. needs love too. I was really excited uh, to about the uh, storm the other night. I posted a storm video, a couple of them. You know? Yeah, Storm Dad. Boring. He writes <gasps> boring. And then he writes, Storm should have hit you. Wow. And then, and speak correct English to me. Wow. 
That's a crazy sentence. Hurtful. That you're you're telling someone to speak N speak correct English N, to me. The letter N speak correct English to me. Then none of that sentence makes no, sense. No, he's, he's grammatically. And he's saying you need to work on your English. No, he's completely out of line. With and then this he got stuff. you here. Look at this one. <gasps> oh, I look great. Now look what he says. This is oh wait, he called me Miss Piggy. That was yeah. really funny. But this is Miss Monroe. <gasps> in that lipstick, lipstick is called <gasps> Million Dollar Red and was sold at Macy's. <gasps> Not Christina P on YMH, whom now has claimed it for hers. Must be honest. Don't get like Tom. Wow. So even he turned this one into an insult at me. But it's I know. But I, he did liken me to Marilyn Monroe, so that's perfect. She is my hero. Yeah, she's great. Oh, there he is. He, he's just he's very envious. I think I he's very envious is. of you. I don't I know. I mean, it's very strange. Here's I think we should do <gasps> maybe. Um, what is the deal? I don't know, man. He's just ramping up. He but he gets cranky like this once a year. We have to call him and like calm him down. Let's do an unsolicited call. Yeah, let's see hope he answers. What he does? Didn't he say he wouldn't speak with us, Nadal? He was so upset. Let's just see what happens. Let's just see. He is just. I just want to know, man, if he answers me. He's a, hello. Hello. He won't answer. You never know. I thought I was about to call him Cody Island. I, I was, I know. Please leave your message uh, for Try again. Try again. Try again. Try one more time? Yeah. Look, we've given him nothing but love and presence and approval. Like, we worship Robert Paul Champagne. He's the greatest. Damn. It upsets me that he's upset with us. It's just so unfounded. We have nothing but love. We do have a lot of love for him. He's, the, he's like the coolest of the cool guys. He started the cool guy club. I believe he was like the original cool guy. Oh, he is. I even re I want him behind me because he's so special. Robert, what are you doing? Yeah. He did say I look like Miss Piggy on Mom Jeans. It was really funny, though. <laughs> Miss Piggy. Some of his jabs. I he's, did. He's told me before. He's like, I'm a better, <laughs> better comedian than you. Better at. He's like, he's like, he's like, so, <laughs> so he always tells me what, that he's better at everything. Yeah. I, little, I, a, I do a little comedy. I'm a better comedian than any of you guys. That's what I'm Cody Island. Why is it breaking up? Yeah. Please leave your message for... Because maybe... Yeah. What time is it on the East Coast? He should yeah. be awake. It's it's late in the awake. afternoon. <laughs> should be up and running by now. Try it this way. Now he knows he's getting... He's like, there's a black guy that wants to fuck bad right now. <laughs> I mean it, man. It's with, it's with Tom. I've been doing a lot of comedy myself. That's what he'll tell you. Yeah, I do. I do like an act, like a cabaret act. Please leave your message. All right. For well, that's that. Um, anyway, I just want you to know, Robert, if you're listening, I think you're going to see this segment that. As always, we, um, we're huge supporters. We've always been genuine, big fans. Um, we're always on team uh, RPC. And um, yeah, I just, uh, oh, we, this is you, you chatted with him about talking to us. Right, we tried reaching out because we're like, and what hey, do you say? We noticed that you were busy, uh, that you've been upset. And uh, when we tried to set up a call, you said, I'm busy. All other people are cool, and I'm not Uncle Shameless No Shine who begs for attention, but I can't stand glass people or people who laugh at other people, handicap or deaf. Okay, that's fair. I do laugh at stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, we do laugh um, at bad things. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, he can't hold it. He's known that from the beginning. Yeah. That's not a new trait. <laughs> You know what out. I mean? Yeah. We, we've always been jerks. We've he always knows been that. I know. Yeah. If you want to move in, you can move, move in. in. But you got to fuck the... I don't know. Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe uh, 
I still think we've always had it in our back pocket that if, if we ever, you know, if he's ever really upset that we send any to go visit him. Um, that's what he wants. Is that what he wants instead of Bruh. hair? A free trip to New York City. There you Bruh. go. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty three ninety five. He's got wigs. You can wear wigs all weekend. Oh, uh, dolls. You get a lease in the key. Food. <laughs> Rent. Uh, you can move in. Yeah, have fun, man. It's a mile to wild to kink. kink. <laughs> um, all right. Well, RPC, you know, you still got nothing but love from us, man. Yeah. All right? So there you go. Um, you are still in our hearts. Now, let's take a quick ba- break, and we will be back with what I can already tell you oh. is one of my favorite episodes one of, of your mom's house. Yeah, one of the greatest. Yeah. We'll be back in a minute. Back to school shopping is coming and all the chaos that comes with it. But with DoorDash, you can be first day ready, pantry staples and classroom supplies to make a good first impression without the stress. With DoorDash, you'll enjoy next level convenience with delivery in the hour, making it easier than ever to get your back to school needs fast. All of your favorite retail, grocery and convenience stores are on the apps. You can shop for everything your kids need for back to school. Be prepared before the big day arrives. Stock up with on-the-go breakfasts, lunchbox staples, and the brands they love. Shop DoorDash to get everything you need for the back-to-school season delivered right to your door. Order now for stress-free back-to-school shopping. Use the promo code YOURMOM to get 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more at convenience, grocery, or retail stores on DoorDash. That's 50% off up to $10 value. When you spend $15 or more, promo code your mom. Don't forget that's code your mom for 50% off your next order. Terms apply. We're so happy to uh, to have you here. Once again, there's so much to cover in, in, uh, in the time that we have, but it is the great Yoshi, everybody. Oh my Give God. God. Yoshi. For Yoshi. I have not Christina. actually heard my voice in conversation. <laughs> for nearly three years now. It's so good to see you. Um, <sighs> uh, we've exchanged messages. I've run into you actually a few times over the last few years, even on tour. You've like I've you popped up at shows that I was at. Do you remember we've run into Club each other? Soda Kenny got me a ticket to see you at the MSG during the 9-11 thing. And yep. you were incredible. Thank and, you. And uh, I knew you, I mean, I was amazed when John Stewart went up to you begging to talk to you and uh, whether his kids and everything so i was so happy to see that it was a fun night that was a really fun night and it was so fun to see you and um i think what was the funny thing was that uh i had i was talking about i go my friend my friend really wants um a picture my high school friend and i was because my uh, buddy of mine from high school was at that show right 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 and then they were like okay and then that person um i might have been john started to go up to you like it's your friend i go that's not my friend that guy's asian and he was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well he was it was like, during hey, covid you know. so i understand yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. um <laughs> let's be honest this is a problem everywhere yeah uh, it keeps a lot of doors closed yeah um no but uh no it was, it was great to see you that night and um and yeah we've missed you man you, you have you've a lot going on very recently yeah. Um, we had we had exchanged some messages about you know you coming back on. I was super stoked to have you back, and then I was just perusing uh, TikTok the other day. Yeah. And going through my crazy algorithm that you have contributed to because mm. I'll see things that you share, and then my algorithm goes, You're "Oh, welcome. you like you like sad stuff." You're welcome. And then <laughs> as I'm swiping, uh, this video starts. I see this this woman walking up the street in New York. She goes, "Oh, I think." Uh, Epstein's place is over here. Yeah. And then they're walking. And then I see Yoshi appear. What? And this video has gone viral. And it's him oh informing goodness, this, Yoshi. This, uh, this couple. Like, it really, he seems like a tour, like the person, the tour guide. Yeah. Of like how to. Of Epstein? Uh, yeah. Well, what happened was I was supposed to work with Russell Peters and my friend couldn't give Love me a ride. Russell. So I decided I'll stay in New York City and I watch a second Broadway show. So in between first and second, mm-hmm. I have two hours. So I, I always do this whenever I visit New York City. I always visit Epstein's home. <laughs> that, that's what you always do. Like I always go up there. And then I just happened to walk in and um, Mary and her son Patrick were kind of looking. I kind of jumped in and said, well, if you want me to explain, yeah. uh, I know a couple of things about this place because I've been there hundreds of times. So you just volunteered this, right? Yeah, yeah. Idea. I mean, every time I see anyone in front of me, I would talk to them. But usually they get scared and walked away. Yeah. But they stayed and... <laughs> 
And I didn't know they were filming it. So yeah. they released it two days ago, and I think it hit 200,000 views. Nice, wow. Man. But um, yeah, I was oh, cool no. there. So what did you inform? Because I watched this, but like you, why do you know so much about it? You've just always been fascinated by this case. Um, I'm, I'm always worried about people, especially poor people in this country. And I want to know why poor stay the way they do. And I think it's usually because it has something to do with super, super rich people fucking the poor people over, you know, mm -hmm. and they're doing terrible things. So I think Epstein's one of many cases where you could learn what's going on in the country. And I've been going to places like for all my life, you know, like mm -hmm. even when, like when I was a kid, I mean, it kind of started with my dad. Uh, when we were visiting the States for the first time in 1979, Unlike most normal dads, he would take me, well, we went to, uh, as my dad used to say, uh, uh, Ted Do Bundy son. So Ted Bundy's house in 1979. So mm. when I was 10, my dad took me to his house. He took you there? Yeah. In, in like Seattle or? Tacoma, Washington. Because we have relatives in Tacoma. So we went his house, his uncle's house, and a couple of the murder scenes and things like that. So, so your dad had an, like a fascination with dark underworld kind of dark Murder, parts of, yeah. sexual assault, war crimes, and things like that. It's a very so, dad thing to, to be into. <laughs> yes. It kind of I is. Mean, dads yeah. do. Dads, dads like murder and stuff. Love war. I mean, my, war. my dad would bring up the most horrific crimes in casual atmospheres. So true. And like he would do Did it. he laugh? Yeah. I mean, so, sometimes. <laughs> Mine did. No, but sometimes he did. Yeah. Sometimes he was, no, he thought, a lot of times it was just like, can you believe that? Yeah. And like, he would do it. Like, my mother would always be like, what? Because he would go, you know, Bundy, sometimes he would rape them after they were dead. Yes. And then, um, and my mom would go, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, then, and then he would be like, just not, not everybody does that. And then he'd just take a bite and she goes, why are you saying this? He goes, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just sharing information. He would just like, share the information war he knew a lot he knew a lot yeah. about the vietnam war mm -hmm. and then he uh, had a pretty good like understanding and, and a lot of stories about yeah. World did he war hate II. asian people no just vietnamese oh. <laughs> <laughs> the jungle agents okay yeah, yeah, um yeah yeah i think i think uh, he used a different word well okay but, yeah. uh, um no i'm no i think anybody that goes in war he's not like he I, i'm joking he didn't really hate, yeah. hate vietnamese people i think he hated being in that war and, yes. and in combat. You know, there's, if you're in combat, you, you generally, you you really are trained to kill um, a, the, the enemy. And so you develop probably a lot of emotions about it. I think uh, this is probably true for like um, Christine and Dr. Drew, because you guys are doing an amazing podcast. But uh, a lot of times when you have these wars, um, people who fought in a war, uh, it's an interesting connection where a lot of them ended up being a serial killers because mm. uh, the trauma mm. in war. There's a guy named Dr. Peter Bronsky mentioned. Um, there's so many grab. Most of the serial killers either serve in the war, or they have a family member serve, and that trauma is brought home. And there's violence and you know terrible environment and genetic. So a lot of them have that background. So, but it's interesting that you've yeah. always had a fascination with kind of I would say the underworld in a, in a way, like yeah. kind of the dark side of the force, mm -hmm. right? But that you were raised. With, with, around somebody who also had that fascination. I, I think because of my dad and um, I'm, I'm Korean, Japanese, Zainichi Koreans, right? So we live in terrible neighborhood and I grew up with um, Yakuza mob and crimes. And I, I don't know how many times I saw somebody getting stabbed. Really? Yeah. yeah. Because we don't have guns, so that best way to murder someone with knives, you know. Yeah, and, very uh, stabby. Like in London, they have a real knives problem, they're saying. Glasgow is like one of the number one places in Europe, stabbing. Mm. Yeah. So seeing that and it's not so much like liking it i want to know like how can we prevent it from happening and you kind of have to go to those place read about them study about them and see what caused the problem and trying to solve it you know yeah yeah and this is true with serial killers and terrorists and sex offenders and um and epstein and i went to that uh, gillian maxwell case i went to harvey weinstein um the Masterson kid from the 70s show, I went to that case too. Really? And uh, I saw Elizabeth Holmes sentencing as well. So you went to wow. all these. Yeah. And uh, so you really, you were <laughs> fascinated by this. Yeah. I want to know, I mean, I, I don't know what's the solution, but if I brought, but brought these stories to public, there's somebody who would be smart like Christina or Dr. Drew to figure baby. out, mm. you know, because um, and it doesn't make me feel good seeing people suffer like this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what? I didn't know he's going to get that serious. Well, no, 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 no. What, no. Go ahead. What, go ahead. what do you What do you find you those people have in common? 
they have to have something in common. I think sex is one of the coping mechanism, you know, for mm. example, I mean, I don't have any sort of training, but my feeling is, uh, for example, um, Epstein and um, I'm, I'm working on a project with a friend named Mikey Slyman, and uh, um, he is friend with a guy named Joshua Nichols and, and his dad, Terry Nichols, one of the two Oklahoma City bombers. So we've been talking to them. Very cool. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, talking to these people, um, oh, so Joshua's dad, uh, uh, Terry Nichols, he told Mikey like a year ago, uh, by the way, Ted want to talk to you guys. And of course, he's talking about Ted Kaczynski because mm -hmm. they're both locked up in Supermax in Florence, Colorado. Yeah. And interesting thing about Ted, because I love I've, Colorado, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely in the summer. Lovely. Um, Kaczynski and Epstein, there's one thing that I noticed that's similar, which is um, they both skipped grades. I mean, oh, they're Kaczynski, smarties. They, they, Kaczynski skipped like five or six grades. I think Epstein, like a two or three grades. And in Japan, we think this is a child abuse because mm. even though they're smart, you skip those grades, they're not emotionally ready to be yeah. with other kids. Totally. Yeah. So what happened is some, someone like Kaczynski, imagine, you know, you know, you're 16 or 17, you're seeing you, uh, Christina, and there's a 12 year old kid. You're not gonna talk yeah. to that kid. You're not gonna yeah. date. So this kid is isolated, never learned to connect with females. Mm. So eventually, um, because he had a childhood trauma as well, uh, it got to the point where Kaczynski was thinking about becoming a woman, because if mm. you can't be with a woman, the next best option to be a woman. Mm. So he had all this kind of problem and uh, he never really had a good sex life. So to him, bombing and killing people was his orgasm. Mm. And That's an interesting theory. And, th and terrorists, they have a different coping mechanism. To them, if they brought caliphate and kill a bunch of uh, heretics, this is their orgasm too. Wow. I mean, but once again, this is my theory working Porn well, you business. know them. You, you, yeah, you've got an extensive background in the porn industry. I was going to say. I've been to Afghanistan three times, yeah. You've been to Afghanistan three times to do, to tour, right? As a comedian, hopefully? No, Not vacation. just for fun. What? I went there for vacation. What parts? Uh, I went to um, Kabul. Yeah, and lovely I went in to, the summer. <laughs> I even went to Panjshir, which is like 50, 70 Jesus miles north. Christ. Where it, um, um, How was Afghanistan? It's beautiful. I, yeah. I, I, I learned right away on the first day where they have hookers, which is Chinese Perfect. restaurants. Perfect. So Chinese tell me restaurants. that. Right away. Um, it's, um, I, I don't have a, I know you play sports, so you have a good eye for playing defensive player, what the quarterback's going to do. Yeah. My eyes were trained, like, <laughs> like I used to look at those scramble TV when you look in tits. Remember they used a sensor? Yes. Yes. I used to kind of stare and every once in a while you pick up a tits or ass, you know? Mm -hmm. So I kind of trained my eyes um, <laughs> from a young kid. Like they used to have a commercial where people were working out for sports membership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one time I caught something, none of my friends caught it. Like, didn't you see it? So we rewind, because we tell it from the VHS. There was a girl doing one of those leg exercise. Mm -hmm. And when they did it, split second, you could see her pussy. Yeah. They, wow. They, they they purposely put it there, but regular people don't. Right. You know, I don't have any talent except eye for pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes a pervert to catch a pervert. <laughs> sure. So, so I caught. I noticed this, and that's like, why that's a pussy right there. Yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. cool. So you saw hookers in Afghanistan, don't the Taliban? Like, don't aren't they? You all could over find that alcohol, stuff? but they're hitting away. You could find prostitutes. Wait, so somebody so you cool. ask and you find they're like, it's in the Chinese restaurants. I'm in a Chinese restaurant, and, and I could tell right away that uh, they're hookers. You I, could tell right away. Right away, yeah. Because like where I grew wow. up, you really have How the do eye. You know? Yeah, I grew up in a neighborhood where it's really bad neighborhood in Japan, and uh, I'm only lived like mile and a half away from uh, red light district. So as a kid, I used to sneak during the day, walk into this neighborhood, and some of the ladies were like, "Could you go meet?" You know, I do errands, they give me a little change. So I used to deliver food for hookers when I was a little kid. Yeah. And uh, just when I, when you hang out with them, you just, you know, when you meet comedians, you know right away you know that it's yes. a comedian. Yes, yeah. Yeah. When you meet an athlete, you know, there's something about them, you know. And I went to Davos during World Economic Forum <laughs> this year. Uh -huh. I don't have a credential. So what I did was every time I see a group of uh, um, Asian people, like they're Chinese, or Japanese or Korean group representing their yeah. company or government during World Connect Forum, I just kind of sneak, walk 
with them into those hotels and and hang out. Oh, you're like those Asians. I'm I'm part of the yeah. yeah like what Russell Peter called it, I just ching chong the whole situation, right? Yeah. So I sneak in. <laughs> Excuse me, you, you did what to the situation? <laughs> I just ching chong the situation. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> and if they ask me, I just speak like Japanese or whatever, so they don't bother me. So I went in, and right away during the World Economic Forum, I could tell like this is like. Uh, call girl and sex workers right away, you know. I could yeah. just tell, because a lot of these executives say they're executive assistant or niece, like, come on, I'm not a fucking amateur. Yeah. I know what's going on. And every time these super rich people talk about what they're going to do for the rest of the year, they're always telling people like, you don't have to have stuff. Isn't it nice when rich people tell you you don't have to have anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's nice. Or good looking people tell you you don't have to be good looking. Yeah. <laughs> if you really want to know what these fuckers are going to do for the rest of the year, yeah. talk to all the sex workers that week. Mm. They'll tell you exactly what their mind's at. Really? Yes. Because they, they open up to them? And if they didn't have a really good year and they didn't get a big Christmas bonus like Goldman Sachs workers, they're going to take it on the sex workers. They always wow, do. Oh, that's so really interesting. Them. Then you talk to them and they'll tell you what's going on with them. Yeah. Wow. Hey, have you been to North Korea? I, w I would like to go, but I haven't been there. Mm. Yeah. That seems like your next logical destination. You, you've been to Afghanistan. Kabul's lovely. And Christian, I'm glad sure. you said that. Kim yeah. Jong-un, um, when he was second, because uh, everybody suspected uh, his older brother would take over. So yes. he, he went to school in Switzerland. That's right. He got kicked out of school. Why? Because, uh, one, he wasn't doing any of his studies, but they found a bunch of porn with him. This is true. He got kicked out of school. And you, you know what kind of porn it was? Mm. What? Uh, BDSM, obviously, because it has yeah. something to do with power, mm. giving up power or having power over someone. Did you get the hooker in Afghanistan? No, no, I didn't do that. No. Um, I was a little concerned. I, I don't know what happened if I did, you know. Well, that's, that, oh, that, that yeah. would be, I mean, more than the normal amount of risk it feels like yeah, to do something do like that. that in Afghanistan. Yeah, I, I mean, we were a little crazy. Me and my friends would just walk around with that supervision at night and you're not with supposed what? We okay. just walk around Kabul and you're not supposed to do that. Oh, yeah, you are a little crazy. That's a kind of a crazy vacation. Yeah. But I look one of the three ethnically, Hazaras. Oh, right. Okay. So if, you, if I put a dirt on my face, I look like the locals. <laughs> what was your hotel like in Kabul? No. I was staying with a friend. So, because um, <laughs> I've, I've briefly. I love that laughter. He's, yeah. he's the MVP. I've spent time in Afghanistan and I've flown over Kabul, and that was the only spot that I saw that had electricity. It yes. is a very sparse country. Yes. It, 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 it literally is like time traveling to like the medieval period. So, I'm curious as to what drew you to spend time I have there. I want to know what I've been hearing media is true. Oh. And I want to go to this place, but I also Sure, want, that's I, a good reason. And um and I want to know more about terrorist activities and um um I I don't, I don't think I told Tom last two years I've been going to DC helping my friend Kareem. He's writing a book about sexual proclivities of terrorists. So I'm a, I've been an advisor. So it's, wow. it's kind of like- You really it, know everything. He's academic, but he he needs a pervert to explain how these guys think. I love this. Can and I you're, ask you, because you've been, you're so fascinated by this, you know, like the, the world of perversion and also yeah. elitists. You said, you mentioned briefly, you think there is an actual, like there's a tell, the type of attraction that elitists have like elitist men, uh, hetero men have towards women, just like there's, there's like a, a type that like MAGA. Yes. Like, so tell me what those were again. So during COVID, once I was allowed to travel, I went to all the um, rioted city. Um, I went to all the prominent black people getting co killed by cops, you know. Like you went I'm, to those cities? I went, I went to George Floyd because George Floyd did porn. So I feel like he's a colleague. Did porn? Yeah, he did porn. Really? Uh, amateur. They called him uh, Houston Floyd. and uh, Houston Floyd? He was a tremendous performer. Really? I mean, yeah, yeah, he's really, really good. And uh, I, I feel really wow. bad wow. for him and um, what happened to him. So uh, Brianna Taylor, all these people I went and kind of see like... Um, what really happened to them. And um, I also went to MAGA rallies and BOM. And it's interesting, because, <laughs> um, you know, whenever I travel overseas, you know, like people say, like the white people say, don't go to a black area, it's dangerous. But when I go there, people are very nice. And when I went to black area, they say, don't go to white area, it's dangerous. When I went, they're very nice. Oh, so right. mm. So I feel bad that I think 
Um, they're actually good people. It's and the, then, uh, ironically, people always go, oh, it's cool to go to anywhere Asians are. They're super nice. And then you go and you're like, mm, they're, they're kind of right. rude. Yeah. yeah. So COVID. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so I used my provision. So I went to MAGA rallies. It, it's, it's interesting. A predominant thing that they love is huge tits. MAGA people. Yes. So you're saying th this is kind of fascinating <laughs> that there's almost like a general speaking, like that's ge a minor, general yeah. thing. It's almost like when they every year, you know, the the like. Pornhub releases the most searched, yes, um, right, most searched type of porn, like state by state. Yeah, and they go. This is what's this is what's searched the most in Alaska, in Oklahoma, yeah. in New York, and it'd always be like a type, and they don't always line up. But you're like, this is what's popular in the state. Yeah, you're saying that at a like that MAGA rally, yes, people. <laughs> Um, my impression was that they like big tits, number one, and then after that a big at like so, but tits like big old tits for it MAGA. Makes, it, it makes sense because most of them are white, yeah, and most of them come from Northern Europe. The primary diet North Europe here is uh, dairy, and where mm. does dairy come from? Big tits, big tits. So when I go to mm. BOM rallies, they are most attracted to a big asses, big fat ass. Because they come, most of the black and Latino come from southern regions of the world. Mm -hmm. So they are like big asses, right? Yeah. So sometimes when I hear these people argue with each other, only thing I really hear is like, like almost like the, the show in Snoopy, like they were saying like, like big tits, big ass, yeah, big, big tits. Ass. But like, I'm saying, guys, it's okay to like big tits and big asses, right? I'm trying to unite the country mm. here. And then what you also know, this is what was really fascinating is that you see those in those demos, yes, but that elitist, like the super elite, the super wealthy men, are not into huge tits. No, because um, over the years, um, so like if you look at Vanity Fair magazine, yeah, uh, when they have these fancy um, ads for like yeah. uh, expensive clothes, on the bottom they'll tell you where you could buy these fancy clothes, and they're usually where the super elite people live, you know, Bell Harbor or Palm Beach. So I use that magazine go to the natural habitat of where super rich people live, right? Uh -huh. So I go there and I notice every time I go there that, that, that consistently, it's not a big tits and big ass places. I, skinny I, tits and skinny asses, I, they're tall. As soon as you said this, I had a, so true. I have felt an alarm go off. I'm like, that is so true that the really elite- Super rich people. Super skinny, rich. Skinny, skinny, skinny. It's all about like so, so thin. And like, and no tits and no asses. And then, and no tits and no ass. Yes. And I think it's that's crazy been, that you wouldn't want one, right? Like, yeah. You, you, and it's really weird because to me, um, I know some people don't agree with me, but to me, porn is more pro women than fashion because in fashion magazine, they're always trying to sell the women in this country and the whole world that you have to be 5'10, 5'11, 6 feet tall, oh, and not, 110, 120 pounds. Not pad. anymore, baby. That's Now there's fat models. It's, they're changing. Yeah. But all the years. Oh, I like the, I like the model you're talking about, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the years I used to work in porn, no one has ever, ever asked me, I'm looking for porn with women who are 6 feet tall and 120 pounds. Oh, that's this so has true. never happened. Never come up. Never come up. In fact, porn's porn with pro women. They're like fat women, that's women so with facial hair, uh, ugly Old women. Old women, moms, Old women, grandmas. Missing God. limb, smelly women. So, so porn true. is more pro women than fashion. Or pro, yeah, sexual. Real, what real sexuality is, tits and ass and smells and yes. all people. That's so interesting. But the, the rich elite want to have relations with adolescent bodies, it sounds like. That's why if I can't beat you up, I can't get hard. <laughs> so. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> so what, what, when, I, when I started reading about Epstein, you know, I, I read about an article 2003, uh, when they wrote about him in Vanity Fair, it was very nice, uh, you know, it's very misleading. Then 2007-8, Jack, uh, Julie K. Brown wrote about how he got away with, uh, uh, and, and, and I actually met her during Gillian Maxwell's case. So I've been kind of going to those places that, uh, you know, I've been to every one of his property except to the Pell Island. Um, I thought I saw him, but I think I got confused with some other what, white I'm, guy. I want to go back to this uh -huh. body type. What do you think it is about the super elite, and it has to be the super elite men, n not being attracted to large, like want, like being attracted to no tits, no ass. What do you think that is? Do you think it's because everybody else can get, like is attracted to the big tits, big ass, so they go, I don't yeah. want what everybody else gets because I'm so 
so high up here. I want, I, you know, what I mean, I want something that not everybody else is getting, or my desires are not the same. But as that's the across lower. the board with rich women. Is deprivation is wealth. Mm-hmm. You to look the skinnier. It's yeah, because it's commonplace to be heavy. Well, I can see like how. I mean, I'm just trying to get into the psychology of it. That like I'm probably wrong, but that like how big fake tits could be like. Ugh, you paid like. You got like those it's grotesque. You have yes. these huge, and that's so that's so common. That's so it is. Yeah, every right, day right, that right. You, that's you how would they get see that. It. I don't know. It's just it's a fascinating thing that because when you said it, I was like, oh man, you're right. Every time I've been around that crowd, that's, that's right. Super, the, yeah, the, the the elite women that are with those men are like emaciated, mm-hmm. and, yes. and it's almost like a, a point of pride that like look how she doesn't have breasts and she doesn't have an ass. It's like flat, and that's the same as um you know a an age group of of women that in this case with Epstein, like that's what he was attracted to. Yeah. Sorry, this might be a little long winded theory yeah. of mine. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. But you know what popped in my head when I saw that? Um I remember reading a book about Jerry Seinfeld one time. Yeah. And he was talking about where he works really hard and you know, um the way he set up his luggages, their sense of order. And he's meticulous his jokes uh, there's no fat in it yeah. there's something about elite people where it's almost mathematical there have to be some sense of order and the person that he ended up marrying uh, she was also married previously to some other rich person so mm-hmm. whenever I see these women there's something about these women whether it's Ghislaine or Elizabeth Holmes really attract the super elite men so if you really want to know What's going on? It's it's almost like a when you have a venomous snake. Yeah. You take their venom and you make antidote. If you study these women, I think you will find out what motivates these men, why they do what they do. Because they, you have to study the women first. Yes. And and, and mm. uh, the reason I was gonna say um, skipping grades is because I think when you never learn to connect with women at that age, I think it, it becomes a dysfunction. Mm. It's, it's a it, you know what's interesting? Because um I learned who are the most dangerous people in the world based on what porn they watch. What's that? It's Chinese people. Really? And the reason I say it, because every time I had a customer at the porn shop, when Chinese people rent you movies, yeah. it's the same goddamn movies over and over. Really? And, and, and Chinese the, are the most dangerous? It's because every time they rent a mo- porn movies, they always watch movies where they're fucking the boss or fucking at work. You see, even in... Even during fantasy, they're thinking about fucking work. Mm-hmm. What yeah. kind of crazy fucking people is that? Yeah. Sad. That's the Chinese? Yes. You know, Mexican people work really well. Oh, this shit. This one's for you. <laughs> that connected right there. Oh, my God. Ooh. That's Japanese for sure. Yeah? Yeah. 100%. Ooh. It's, um... <laughs> I mean, also, it's just that gets old getting hit that much, right? Oh, fuck, man. I always think about what a great gig this is for a woman, though. It's so easy. It's like she doesn't have to fuck him. She just has to hit him. It's so great. One if I f- did do sex work, that would be it. One of my friends, it's his job to get his testicles stomped on. Oh, it's yeah. great. It's one of your friends? Yeah. It's his job? He does them all the time in Japan. Oh. He does those movies or like he does it privately? Um Privately and the movies, yeah. Get stomped on? How does he? How does he not get like severely hurt or sick? <sighs> I mean, he's sick. so into it. He's a, he loves. He it. likes yeah. the feeling. Yoshi, how's your medical testing gigs? What have you been doing? Um, it's been great until this year. Um, I got kicked out of all three last. Uh, what? Yeah. So for people that don't know, like we have to give some context here. For a long time, you have been someone who signed up for. Uh, medical testing, like yes. when, when when there's a new medicine coming out, yeah, they have to do at some point a human trial and see how it affects people, right? And this is everything from like Alzheimer's medication to yeah to what something for diabetes, whatever is hitting the market, they have to give it to people. You go into these facilities, sometimes you you live there, yeah, and they are monitoring you and giving you this medicine for a certain amount of time. Then you get paid for that, yes, and. So I've known this about you. Everybody's known this about you for years. But what you're saying is in the last year, you did three of these. You no, got this, kicked year, out? This, this year, this is the first time where I've done three studies in a row where I qualify. I go in for the first day. The next day, they 
cut me. Cut you? Yeah, just oh, like cut you. No, I mean, uh, they kick me out. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, it's like football players. Right? I joined some. You got training. cut, and you, you don't, and no explanation. They they told me um, they have a um, healthier healthier candidate, but oh. so each time I get cut, they'll pay me a thousand dollar for the night. Oh wow! But um, it's not great because I was expecting to make you know maybe sixteen to twenty grand. A half wow! Wait, so did you ever do any of the COVID stuff? So that was a really strange time because after, I think after six months after COVID started, they started resuming studies and it was a little unorthodox because I think everyone was confused. Like every medical staff I went, um, they were trying to figure out what other f- clinics were doing. So they were really confused. They, nobody knew what was going on. And uh, when I qualify for study, you usually check checking on the first day. They won't let us do that. They will put us in the hotel for like four days make sure we don't have COVID. And uh, they rented a second floor of a hotel and everybody, remember the scene from ET where everybody was dressed in those crazy, Yeah, they were like that going to the uh, hotel hallway, wow. making sure nobody had a COVID. So mm. um, of course we made more money because we have to be there extra oh, three it was a good payday. It, it was, COVID was great for me. You know, it was bad <laughs> for everyone. I got to, tr- I traveled so cheap. I did, I did around the world twice. Um, the hotel was so ch- I got like uh, you know, <laughs> penthouse hot- because nobody was traveling yeah. yeah and I didn't give a shit you know because um, <laughs> once again this is co- I'm not gonna get COVID with this face right yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know how many times I've been in a room where almost everyone got COVID <laughs> I never got sick not once I never yeah. got sick well, uh, probably all those medical were, trials were hookers working during COVID yeah, I went to Germany and uh, went in. God, it was so crazy because uh, every day you have to get COVID test there. And, and when you walk into those brothels, you, you have to, this is a little invasive, but you have to show your ID. You got to do your paperwork. Jesus. And they take your picture and then fingerprint. So like, I don't care that fuck hookers, you know, like everybody knows, but like who, what, what person is going to go into this facility, you know, um, Mm. You know, like Nadal Van der said, like it was a little like a yeah. Nazi kind of shit going on, yeah. you know? And yeah. that's where um, it was going. It's so I tried, but every brothel hall, I have to sign in, do all this paperwork, yeah. you know? And um, at one time, I was supposed to travel with my friend from Northern Germany back to Ukraine. And somebody. You to Ukraine? I was trying, uh, like a month or two months before the war started, I was oh. supposed to uh, help her travel back to Ukraine. And. Uh, Somebody in her factory tested positive for COVID, so they shut down and she can leave. You know, she's a close friend of mine, so I, I want to see her. So I sneak in town. It was so scary because if they caught me and her sk- sneaking out of the facility, I don't know what they would have done. But yeah, it, it's like I was like a Jew during World War II sneaking in town. Head, yeah. And if they caught me, both of us would get in trouble. So yeah. I saw her for like half an hour. Uh, plus, once again, this is not, nobody liked this face in sure. Europe at that time, you and, know. And she was a working girl. No, no, no. She was working at the factory. Oh, at the factory. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And she, But, what, I mean, Germans are really, really going crazy with the COVID policy. Um, did I want to hear about you returning to Japan. Okay. Because you, you mentioned um, that you went back to Japan and, and you remembered hearing about Bert saying uh, about your incident in Japan, right? Okay, so 10 years ago, Joe Rogan asked me if I could go with him to Japan, but I was so nervous of getting arrested because, you know, I almost killed people there. Yeah. So I didn't want to. Mm-hmm. Russell Peters' brother, Clayton Peters, asked me. So the love Peters, yeah. mm-hmm. they told me to say hello. They love you guys. They're so happy with everything you guys have done. Um, so when he asked me to go to Japan with him during Russell's tour in Japan, I couldn't say no, but yeah. I didn't really want to go. But what, so for people that don't know, just briefly, you... My dad died and we don't know if it was suicide or it was murder. So I blame my stepmother. So August of 2003, I almost killed her, her attacked her nephew, you, brother-in-law and sister. All of them. I ran out of the country. I haven't been back and I'm really afraid to go back because um, I thought I would go to prison. You know, even Amnesty International said the prison in Japan is one of the worst in the whole world. The prison is? Oh yeah, uh, it's, it's terrible. Um, but I can't, I can't, I can't say no to the Peters family. So I say yes. So I was traveling Asia when Russell was doing shows in Bangkok, Singapore, uh, Malaysian places like that. And I was in Taipei 
And then on the day of traveling to Japan, I'm like, oh my God, I, I was just hoping the plane crashed before I'm leaving or yeah. I, I didn't want to go. <laughs> That's a good wish. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to go because I, I was sweating like. Thank, thank you. Now. <laughs> I was just terrified what's going to happen, you know. Yeah. And I'm sitting at the terminal. It's all 98, 99 percent Asian people. Ugh. And <laughs> yes, COVID. Anyway, um, <laughs> there's this white dude. Because I'm talking to my friend, I'm just panicking. Like, oh no, I don't want to go back. I don't know what to do. They're trying to calm me down, you know. I was talking to my friend Tana Manu and people like that. And then this guy kept looking at me and he eventually walked over and said, excuse me, are you Yoshi? And like, uh, yes. And then goes, oh my God, I heard about you. And he started talking to me. He said something about Tom Segura and Bert was talking about, he said something about Bert saying, you know, that thing that Yoshi did in Japan. Evidently he looked it up and he remember, and most people don't recognize what I look like. Yeah. But you know how goofy the way I talk. Yeah. He recognized me. So he's like, aren't you worried about Japan? He's this fucker. Is right fight. before the flight. He wouldn't shut the fuck up. You know, like, I don't like, I don't know what I did to Bert, but like, I don't, um, I don't want to upset him because I don't want him to say something to immigration. Oh, it's, it's not that big deal, but I'm just sweating. And like, he just my, keeps my, my, talking my, and talking. Yeah, he wouldn't sh shut the fuck up. So um, I'm sweating and my, you know, I think I was way in the back and Clayton was nice enough to put me in like a really nice second and third row. And like, I'm sweating, it's getting closer and closer. And then as soon as we land, like, oh my God, I, I, I have to go. And um, I'm walking across and there's so, you know, it's been 20, you know, 19 and a half years. So I'm walking, it's maze and I go to custom and you know, I mean, I'm just sweating and I walk up, I give my passport. I'm just looking, I don't want to make eye contact. And uh, eventually um, I feel like I turned, he, he, he gave me the passport. He doesn't say anything. So I just keep walking and I, I, I thought, oh my God, I'm okay. And then 15, 20 seconds later, I hear somebody running. I see the guy running after me. And for a second I thought I should just run. Just I'll figure out what to do yeah, later on. Yeah, yeah, I, I sure. run, the problem is there's a bunch of cops there, you know? So like, I, I kind of froze. And what happened was, I was so nervous, I left a fucking passport on the <gasps> counter. And he brought, he was he brought it back, but like, I, I thought he found something, you know? Oh, so um, I walked out and then um, two hours later, Clayton um, landed, we went. But here's the problem. I talked to my friend, John. He's, he's American, but uh, he's practiced law in Japan. So. There is technically stature limitation, but it's there's a disclaimer. Um, it only counts if you've been in Japan the whole time. Oh, ah, not a statute shit. if you leave. So I almost killed her day one, and I was there for eight, nine days. It's only been ten days. So technically, if I go back next time, they could. How do was your trip there though? This time was it? Did you have a good time? Was it? It, it, it was great. Um, Clayton was generous and. Uh, I really miss, I miss there. And uh, I saw my grand aunt, she's suffering from dementia. So I was really happy I got to see them. And they're actually like one of the few decent family in my family. So I was really lucky to see them. But um, I, I was, um, I was really happy I was uh, back, you know. Mm -hmm. And I took my cousin, we went to Fukushima. And that thing that got you for the good luck, Congratulations. You got me something for good luck too. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank <laughs> yes. you. But they're having massive problem in Japan with the population. It's going down. Down, down, down. Uh -oh. No, there's no kid. I mean, I, I don't think we saw any kids going from northern Tokyo to Fukushima. Mm. And when we got there. Is I, this making you consider moving back and making some, uh, having a family? I got vasectomy, so I can't have kids. Oh. You can get a reverse vasectomy. It's too late. It's been over 20 plus. I don't think you could reverse at this point. Really? I don't, I don't, I, Tom, I'm not, I'm going to be a good father like parents like you guys. I, you know, I'm, I'm talking about terrorism, serial killers. That's a and, fun dad. Yeah. But, um, so wait, so what happened in Fukushima? We, we went, well, you, what do you mean what happened? You know what happened. No, no, I meant <laughs> when you arrived. Why do, you, why do you think I'm so goddamn tall? Radiation. Um, <laughs> 
We, we, we once again yeah. went to all the horrible places. You know what's interesting? They're, tr they're trying to bring tourists back yeah. by selling puffer fish. Really? Oh. From there. They have a poison that's 10,000 times more deadly than cyanide. And they have radiation. I don't think that's a very good selling that's point. Is it dried or are they live? They're live fish. and they cut it. And they cut closest oh. to the poison just enough to you could get your, nut, your tongue get numb. That's it. That's kind of cool. It. I'd you, buy that. By the way, did you find that after so many years away? Yeah. Did, um, is your, because this happened actually to an Asian friend of mine where he said he went back to Hong Kong after more years. Yeah. And that. They, everybody was like, your fucking Cantonese is weird, man. Yes. And, and they were like, your slang is all out of date. I thought that was pretty funny that he'd been so like removed from it yeah. that when he went back, they were all like, you you speak really funny. Um, and then you've been away for so long. Is Does your... it happen to you in, in Peru, perhaps? Well, what happens for me is that, yeah. I mean, a version of that where like not speaking for a long time, it, yeah. get, it just gets grammatically poor and then the longer I'm, I'm around it it starts to come together more and then it, it can get really yeah. good if i'm around it a lot but like you know you're a native speaker so i just want it's different i think for you right because like it's your first language but did was it suffering like was it tom you're very insightful it's true and you know the problem with japanese and when you're doing something wrong they don't tell you they don't tell you um. until one of my friends finally told me so i thought hey you but i've been saying hey fuck face oh really because i've been watching <laughs> Hey, I was saying like, excuse me, sir. I was saying like, hey, motherfucker. I was talking like that <laughs> because I've been watching really? so many, I was watching so many gangster things. Yeah. So without thinking, because I talk like to my friend. Oh my God. So you're so saying this to like the person. How do you say it? Yeah. say it in Japanese? Say it. So you're supposed to, anata is like, excuse me, sir, or madam, which is nai. How do you say it? Uh, uh, anata. Okay. Anata. Yeah. But I was saying, omae, it's like, Hey, fuck face, or you, <laughs> you goddamn piece of shit. I'm talking like oh, that. Yeah. Oh my. You're not supposed to say that at all. Yeah. Oh, my. And, but you and, say it. <laughs> and oh, you're my. supposed to say, Kono hito, this person, but I say, Koitu, this goddamn motherfucking piece of shit. And I'm talking like that, but nobody say anything because I don't smile. I'm tall. Yeah, I'm not friendly. Like, yeah. And, and yeah. they, they automatically assume I'm a Yakuza. Yeah. So nobody shut up. And one time, <laughs> but my friend said, Yoshi, I don't want to be rude, but. You're saying that I, I was horrified. No wonder everybody was uh, afraid. They served me right away. And the lady was shaking her hand when they're giving me a tea and stuff, you know? I, I was practically saying, I'm going to kill your family if you don't get the food over here. Because, uh, because you know how America casual, you know? And, yeah. um, but I told my friend, why didn't you say it? Like, I, I didn't want to be rude. Like, well, well geez. Everything's yeah. bad. I don't want to be rude. Yeah. yeah. And... <laughs> I didn't even think one time I walked into a train and, uh, you know, uh, they have this thing called chikan, which is, um, it's terrible, but in Japan, um, crowded trains, these old guys would kind of put their hands, grab asses and tits or, you know, sure. doing all kinds nice. of weird shit. Yeah. yeah. So they have a specific um, train where only women go in. I love this train. I want yeah. to do that. I, without thinking, I just went in the closest one because I was on cell phone and everybody's staring at me and I didn't realize, I, didn't, I realized, Oh my God, I mean the old women one. And I'm, I'm there. And then you're like, excuse me, motherfucking pieces of shit. And I'm talking. <laughs> you're not supposed to talk in train at all. Oh, really? You're not supposed to. And I'm talking really loud. Oh, I'm talking really loud. So, <laughs> soon as I realized I got out, but yeah, I was doing all kinds of stuff I forgot. And by the time I realized I kind of pick up everything back, it was time for me to go home. But yeah, I was. Uh, okay, so I've been, I've been practicing my Japanese on a language learning app. Okay, so you tell me how I just know a few words, but you translate, okay? I'll try. Okay. Hi. C. Ohio. Uh, uh, good morning. Konnichiwa. Uh, hola. Sayonara. Adios. Suki. Uh, I like, but what, how do you say that in Spanish? Uh, Me gusta. Uh, oh, yeah. Um... Hold on, hold on. You know oh. what's funny? You Aka. Know, red. You know how? Uh, you, know how uh, wow. you, you know You know? You know how you say uh, "tit" in Japanese? No, please tell. They don't tell you that in the apps. Uh, chichi. Chichi. Oh, oh chichi. And that's same in Spanish. Yeah, the Mexicans say chichi. Chichi. Yeah. yeah. And Hungarians say tzitzi. Oh. Yeah. Very Weird. good. There we go. Yeah, we could. Uh, 
Israeli is. And I'm sure you know. Yeah, Israeli is also tzitzi. Tzitzi. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you know bukake. Yes, bukake. of course. Buka- yeah, how do you, like, what, is that, what does it actually mean? It's a cooking term. Oh. It, it's a dry noodles. So it means like you have a little bit of sauce. It's not enough to spread. It's enough to spread. <laughs> The reason you have a bunch of people come on their face, you have just enough to spread across the face. Wow. Oh, it's a noodle wow. dish. You put a little bit of sauce, you spread it across. That's so really you, nice. So if you say bukkake or bukkake in Japan, it doesn't mean sexual thing. In fact, most Japanese would know that. Yeah. But it's really funny. You, you go to Japanese, you, can, you could get bukkake ramen or bukkake udon. I didn't realize that. Uh, we well, you know uh, how much we learned today. Yeah, that was, that was really cool. I didn't realize that bento is an actual... You know, people go, oh, getting a bento box. Yeah. That that's an actual... The box that you get. Yeah. yeah. Wait, do, have you performed in Japan? No, I'm, I'm going to. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Christina, you got to do it too. Do I would love, love to. Everybody ask you about you I guys. Love, I, would I would love, love to, to go to it. Japan. Yeah. yeah. I got recognized in Japan. You did? Uh-oh. How do they recognize each other there? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. I, uh, Chinese have advanced technology because how do they identify Asian face scanning? Right? I, I, I can't even tell looking at Asian faces, to be honest. Yeah, if you're like, I don't know, it was a guy. I yeah. Mean, dark hair. Uh, no, but once again, my voice, they recognize me. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really weird, but um, you have a lot of expats living in Japan. Mm. Big your mom's house fans. Really? Yes. You gotta go to Japan, you gotta man. Gotta do it. Gotta do Tokyo. it. <laughs> Arigato gozaimasu. That's what oh, they say wow. in the sushi bar. Thank Great you. Great pronunciations. I know. Um, they just shout at you. What does that mean? Arigato. I know. Thank like, you. Gozaimasu. Uh, thank you very much. Huh? Yeah. Very polite way of saying it. Um, huh? Are you going to show your gift? <laughs> uh, the gift that you brought me? I, um, I think Nadav's holding it now. Oh, okay, good. Uh, Eventually. Go ahead. I put mine on my makeup uh, desk so I can so look at it every day. It's a Dharma sun. It's for good luck. Thank uh, you. That's when you what, have a uh, go. Yeah, here it's on the screen now. Uh, Yoshi brought that. You want to tell people what it is? Uh, since you drive fancy cars, I want you to put it as uh, the air freshener. <laughs> yeah. Jeffrey Epstein uh, wow. air freshener. Where did you get that? Um, I remember meeting with other um, fans of, not fans of Jeffrey Epstein, but people we meet <laughs> and uh, we, we talk. One of the guys just gave it to me. Yeah. That's awesome. It's really nice. It's Thank really you for nice. thinking of me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hanging up there. Yeah. Really cool, dude. Um, <laughs> that's a very cool gift. I don't know. When uh, I, when I saw that, that's Tom. Videos. How did you, by the way, did you know that George Floyd had, was a performer? Or is that something? Because I don't ever remember that being brought up. I had never heard that. They sent, They tried to censor that. But uh, to me, being a porn person, is not a, it doesn't make you a bad person. Oh, I, I'm, not, I'm not Yeah, at all oh, saying No, no, I'm not you guys saying yeah. that. But I think I, I think it was a very, gen- you, could, you could tell what kind of person the way you fuck, you know? Like a mean fucker and trying to hurt a girl. He was very loving and sweet. And uh, you could just, uh, he was a very, very sweet guy. Yeah. In fact, oh. I don't, I don't, uh, here he I is. Hope that, oh, he's jacked. Beautiful man. Yeah. Uh, very gentle with that girl. Mm. And I know. Oh. I, 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 um. Wow, that's not. <laughs> that's that AI they've been talking about, huh? Okay. But you know what's weird? Uh, congratulations, you have a new special, right? Uh, yeah, it's out. It's out. It's called uh, uh, Sledgehammer. Yeah. Tom, I don't know if you know that. That's the, uh, one of my friend's uh, porn black stars, uh, male porn star's name. Is Sledgehammer? Yeah. That's a great porn name. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I thought... And that's one of your friends? Yeah. Is he a gentle giant? Very much so. Yeah. Marlon, wonderful guy. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right, so I have a, a kindred spirit out there. Yeah. Sledgehammer. <laughs> That's a great porn name. Yes. Yeah. Great guy. What's your favorite male? Because the males always have like the funny. What's your favorite name for like you've seen all, you know, all the names. You know yeah. what I mean? Like what, what's where it's like a, a, a name like that, where it's like, you know, it, it implies. I'm biased. My, my favorite one always going to be Brandon Iron. Oh, mm, Brandon Iron. That's Iron. a good one. Yeah. yeah. The reason I say that, uh, by the way, you had wonderful, uh, uh, Adriana Chichik, right? Man. In- incredible. She was such a great guest. That was hilarious. What, she used to have all the combination of beauty, performance, and humor. She was very funny. Strong um, performer, would you say? Sp- she's a strong performer? Oh, yes. Hall yeah. of Fame. Hall of Fame. But her personality is amazing. She was great. Um, she was actually in Greece the same time I was there. Really? Well, the best, actually, the best part of all is that Adriana called Bert fat. Go ahead. Okay. What were you saying? 
So she, <laughs> she, she, I'm sure she has a plenty of interesting story to tell. All that interesting, powerful men that she met. But if you really want to know how the world works, it's usually through male talent. And the reason why you learn a lot about A-list male talent, mm -hmm. what's going on in the world, the super super rich people, they don't like to share their wealth. But Tom, you know what they like to share? Their women, their wives. Really? Oh yeah, that's so true. So they'll they'll bring in a list. Brandon passed away, so uh, he passed away. Yeah. What he, happened to him? Um, he died a couple months after, if I remember right, Brody. Same way. Mm. Oh shit! So um, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, uh, uh, great guys. They knew each other too. But Brandon used to tell me that um, he flying all over the world. And he, he will fuck these super elite wives. And these guys will watch their wives or girlfriends get fucked by these guys. Because he's a porn... Well, they just love these super rich guys want to see no. their wives get fucked by uh, this these is guys. True. But do they want to watch them talks get about this. pleasured? Or do they want to watch the porn guy... I think you know. evolutionary biologists call it like sperm competition. So they see their wives or girlfriend get fucked. Then they'll fuck them afterwards and say, I'll show you. This is how you fucking fuck. Oh. And you know how... Um, Very interesting. The way the penis is shaped, arrow. So the whole purpose is you go in, mm -hmm. the tip of the head will pull other men's sperm out. Okay, I I'm going to get sick. And when, yeah. you, when you ejaculate, you go floss it so you don't take your own sperm out of there. Uh -huh. So um, they like watching them get fucked and um, compete against them and show them that, that they could do it better than them. Than the porn guy. Yeah, well, the husband will fuck them after the porn guy. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. isn't that kind of a, a bold risk Neat you're taking? Idea? Yes, yeah, our anniversary is, is, is coming cool up idea. in November. But isn't it like... Tom, if I ever heard you sharing Christina, that means like, holy shit, Tom is billionaire. <laughs> that's the only reason... <laughs> that's how like, we've really made money. <laughs> Honestly, that's, point. That, that's something that super rich do. I mean, you're, you're planting ideas, wait. man. You're planting ideas. <laughs> Holy shit. That's really but, cool, But don't you think, though, like, um, if you're the super elite, let's say you're this billionaire guy, yeah. and your idea is, I'm going to bring in a, a porn guy. To or multiple bang, guys. Like, or multiple guys, and then I'm going to show you afterwards yeah. that you're kind of setting yourself up for, because you're bringing in pro fuck guys. I think the part of the reason why they're so successful, their yeah. fucking ego is out of this planet. Uh, that makes more sense. And you're they're right. so fucking confident. They think that they're going to yeah. give her yeah. a show, and she's going to be like, this is... Plus, you want to surround yourself with the best to get better, right? It's like 100%. with comedy, you want to hang out with the heavy hitters. Yeah. So that's a good idea. I should start that's bringing what I'm in saying. more porn guys. Yeah. Forget this like <laughs> motorcycle stuff you're into and drag racing or whatever. Yeah, I went, drift, I went drifting. Yeah. Yeah, fun. it's time to start bringing in other dudes, Tom. <laughs> yeah, totally. You're excited about that? It's the only thing I think about yeah. day and night. Day and night. Getting railed by, <laughs> by porn guys. It's <laughs> all I want. God. Maybe Did Rocco. Oh, Nacho. sweet Rocco. Nacho. My favorite. Is Nacho dead? Last time I heard, there's ugly rumor about him having HIV and Aww. somebody died when he said some kind of tour. Did you hear about that? Somebody, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they went to some cave and they licked some toad with hallucinogenic. And they arrested him. I remember yeah, this, yeah, and I don't know what happened after that. Hmm. Well, yeah. that's uh, too bad. Um, <laughs> Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's give Yoshi. The, of course, the my TikTok. Oh, first Yoshi. of all, how do you feel about this? This is one of my favorite performers. Look at Raven. <laughs> you ever seen a horse feel that way? <laughs> this is uh... <laughs> What do you see here, Yoshi? What do you see? I had to edit one of Rocco's movie. Yeah. One time he had a girl tied up to a tree mm -hmm. and a guy walked in with a donkey. He tied up the donkey to a tree and he started fucking this girl. And I didn't realize at the time, donkeys get excited when people are having sex. So what Rocco did was every time they're fucking, he'll pan the camera to donkey's dick. Oh. And that's a problem because it's implied bestiality. So I had yeah. to go and edit that fucking part. So, oh, right. It's, um, like, it's kind of what's happening here. I but feel this sick. Is, I don't this like is this implied, one. But it's implied. By it's a the, nice footage. It's yeah, really the nicely The context filmed. of the video, it makes you think that there's something going on that isn't going on. Because what's really going on, if you must know, sadly, is that she is uh, just giving the horse a belly rub. She's just rubbing the horse's belly. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. 
She's rubbing the horse's belly. And, I and, hate and, this clip. And the so belly much. rubbing. She's not you, joking. No, I'm not joking. No, it's a belly rub. Thank God. And then the horse is going like, ha 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 ha. Oh, I'm sorry. Because I'm so embarrassed. I'm, I'm, I'm I was fool. No, no, everybody's no, fool. I was yeah. too. It's it traumatized, not fooled. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, the horse is named Sierra. Okay. And it's just a belly rub. Oh, can wow. we do TikToks? Can we? Yeah. I don't like yeah, this. But I do like this video. Um. All right. But uh, yeah, you thought what everyone thinks. Yeah. Don't worry. Now. Christine has Sick um, pulled some oh, TikToks. No. And uh, that's for you, Yosh. Let's see. Let's see what we got. She cut you out of here. Any of you girls want to come over here and watch the porn? I'm a flat screen mayor. <laughs> What's going on there? Well, this gentleman, he's got a little dirty shirt and he's got an American Eagle. Yeah. What is that? Handkerchief on his head. And he's just like, hey, any ladies want to watch porn? And I like this because it's a straightforward request. And I admire that for once. There's no, there's no bullshit. Yeah. It's very straightforward. And I hope somebody answered. This kind of reminds me of Harvey Weinstein. I I, I did, I did see him at the court and. uh, You saw him at court too? Yes. Who have you not seen in court recently? Wow. Um, who did I? See? Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> I saw him multiple times. Yeah, yeah. Oh no. Yeah, That's a Russian guy yelling at a polar bear. Yes. Yeah, that's coming into his. That's crazy. His little um, school metal bus cabin. that he lives in. Yeah. yeah. That's oh my god. Terrifying. That's terrible. How, how do you even consume that much soda in a day? I used to drink anywhere from 12 to 20 Diet Cokes a day. How? Uh, I went to McDonald's three or four times a day. To me, they always had the best fountain drink, fountain Diet Coke. I don't know, because I don't drink water. I hate water. I cannot stand to drink water. You don't drink water at all? No, Rich Beam and some of the guys, they call me the camel, because I don't drink water. I never drink water on tour. That's insane. That's uh, John Daly. Oh, yes. It's funny um, because he doesn't, you know, he looks like somebody that doesn't drink water. Yeah. <laughs> he definitely shows. Yeah, yeah. I know his wife went to prison for uh, a counterfeit signature and stealing money or whatever. John Daly's did? Yeah, his wife. Um, pull up John Daly now, 2023. Um, I, think I love the guy. I think he's, oh, he's one of He's the, a great American. He is um, one of the, the legends of... Uh, Tiger Woods said if he had a discipline like him, he could have won multiple masters. Look at know? him. That's him now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it good. really is very Bert-like, though. Like, yes. it's a um, similar approach to life. Bert also has, by the way, a beautiful golf swing. Like, honestly. Does, does Bert drink water, though, anymore? Does uh, he drink Bert's water? Bert's not a big water drinker. No, it's no. Kool-Aid still. Is he still doing Kool-Aid? That is true, right? Yeah, Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid oh yeah, yeah he still drinks Kool-Aid. He likes Kool-Aid. <laughs> I hope um, he take care of himself. That dude was, was having 20 Diet Cokes a day. God <laughs> damn. So much. That's so crazy. It doesn't even taste good after a while, no? I feel like you, you, you don't even taste it. It's so much. Yeah, like, it's too much. Because what's in Diet Coke? It's phenylalanine or whatever, that chemical. Yeah. It's just, it's not even really sugar, but it's something else 20, than you're doing. 20? <laughs> so much. But Diet he's right, Coke. though, about this. McDonald's has the best fountain yeah. drinks. Their Hands formula. Down. Delicious. Yeah. They're straight. Their regular Coke and their Diet Coke tastes unlike anybody else. It's true. Yeah. They pay attention. Oh, oh, this is David Gold. This is his new TikTok. This is Gold? This is David Gold. He's just, he's oh, got his uh. shoe and he took his foot out. He's oh. rubbing his foot with the, li- the nails are so long and. His Didn't you put this in your stories? Yeah. Oh. This has to be the worst TikTok from a boomer I have ever seen. Here he is with his gigantic left calf, and he's going to rub his heel. And then that's What is it. the idea behind this? He's just showing you his feet, and they're, they need a rub. And then he's going to put that wow. hoof back in the shoe. It's so disgusting. I used to have a customer at Taboo Video. <laughs> we used to have a porn booth in back. So yeah. people put quarters and you know jack off to their movies, right? This gay guy, we told him not to do it, but he'll beg them to let them suck their toes. Oh, yeah. and um, and and we also told him, please, like he'll beg them to piss in their the guy's mouth. Yeah. And uh, we eventually <laughs> had to kick him out because yeah, sometimes he, you do. Yeah. <laughs> eventually, we had to kick him out because he was licking the sperm off the floor. <gasps> So, um, I mean, it helps me clean up quicker, but we don't yeah. want uh, people doing that kind of shit. How know? old was this guy? Late sixties. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow! But that's I mean. But yeah, that, that, that's a fetish that, that people alive. love. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe somebody requested that David do this. I mean, uh, he's a seventy-year-old man, and 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 I've, there's never been any implication that he's into like. 
but he Andrew. takes requests because he he did what the fans oh, asked for last this time. This is absolutely. I think this is yeah, and he also sometimes just makes bad boomer TikToks. You know. Yeah. Can I ask you something? I was amazed uh, two shows ago when you did a live show. Yeah. People are eating. There's two guys. One guy was doing that thing where shitting into. Well, can you? You can say, you it, go say ahead. it. How did you get away with that? Not getting in trouble in uh, Austin. Uh, oh, with the, with the city. Yeah. Oh, at the live show. Yeah. Yeah. There was actually day of. They go. We were doing a um a run through. This is when we did it at the uh, at the theater here. Um, what's it called? At the Paramount. At the Paramount. Paramount. And during the, our 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 tech run, somebody was like, "Well, you know, you can't like show like something." crazy and i was like wait what and they're they're like well i mean you're not gonna sh i go no no no. there's we're not doing this there's no rules that's the only way we do this there's no rules for anything and the they brought in like somebody else and yeah the the agent had to call the yeah. team and i was like look this was always set up that this is going to be absolutely pushing it and we're, we're not holding back on anything it's gonna be one of the worst things you've ever experienced and i was the lady amazed. was like uh and then after these phone calls i mean my agent was like this has always been the thing there's no restrictions and when and then we went for and by the way there are people who went to that that i was there yeah i didn't realize you were there did i know yeah, that i don't remember that because that. that was September. people just throwing up and people um, threw up and also i also <laughs> have friends of friends like even rogan called me he goes we had friends of ours go to your show <laughs> And they said it was the worst thing they'd ever seen in their life. <laughs> um, they, they left. They walked out. I was like, that's the goal, man. Yeah. That's My friends in Germany, uh, GGG, German goo girls, and other like shit porn people, they were like elated that they, you were able to do that. <laughs> yeah. That the, but that's I, who we do it for. <laughs> but yeah, I couldn't imagine 15, 20 years ago, live events to show something like that. We would have gone prison for that. Easy. Like I have to sit down, make sure not even a little bit of shit in the movie, or we get in trouble. Really? Yeah. One time, Rock was fucking this girl in too much lube, and ass was wide open, and all this liquid just flew out, and we don't know if it's shit or lube. Oh. So. Um. There's six of us. We have to vote and see if shit is that a lube. shit or lube, and then because if it is shit, that's a problem. We we, we we can't sell it. We have to cut that stuff out. How of come? It. It's not even necessarily legal, but police might find a reason to raid local porn shops, so oh. we can't have that. Oh. Oh my God, what is that? So it's a class ring, it looks oh my like. God. It's grown into a dude's finger, oh, a woman's no. finger. Like, you know, you wear rings and then you can just get gain weight. And this thing grew into this person's hand. That's rough, Christine. Yeah, it's pretty rad, huh? Take your I'm rings this off. meat lover, and I love hot dogs. Mayonnaise all over them, shooting down my throat. Ugh. Oh, my goodness. Miss Meat Lover, she's my new favorite. She posts her eating Slim Jims and eating different processed meats. You know who else loves hot dogs? Me. No. Hi, TikTok at the pool. <laughs> eating a hot dog. <laughs> hot dog, hot diggity dog. That's awesome. Pretty cool. I love hot dogs. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. Oh, this is haunting. Right? Happy birthday, <laughs> Ashley. I hope this year is one of the best ones yet. We're sending Super you lots magical of magical and can't wait to meet you soon. That's the Olsen twins. Bye. Super magical. By the way, they have a look that I think the super elite would be attracted to. Yes. Very much so. Uh, this was another editing problem that we had. A guy was fucking two identical sisters. Mm -hmm. It's a problem because uh, the pro problem, I, okay, it's a problem for me. So what happened is you could have sex, two sisters can have sex with the same guy. That's, sure. not, that's not a problem. The problem is when he takes dick from one sister's pussy and put it in another sister's mouth, imply incest. Oh, and this so, is, so these two sisters were doing a scene? With a guy. So that is that's fucking. I mean, it's hot, but it's just, it's just a problem. You, you, you know, I'm from. Well, it's, it's kind of hot to me, but um, it, but it creates so much problem for me, you know, because you have a boner and trying to edit. But um, yeah. But these are the kind of things that you don't know behind the scene. The things that we have to deal with, you know, that's a lot to deal with. Yeah. Yes. Um, so you had to be careful on those edits too. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I something. When you were editing porn, did you have to J or D like every day? 
in the beginning, but after a while, you get so jaded, you know? Yeah. And yeah. You, you, the problem is eventually you have to see something really, really hard. You gotta keep raising, raising the stakes, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a scene where uh, Ashley Blue, a guy named Khan Tujin, the director, was choking the shit out of her and she literally passed out. It, it, it's the point where... And that's what you came to next? I mean, I, I hate to say it, but uh, yeah, yeah, it was like... Yeah. Hmm. They gave me a boner at the time, you yeah. know? It's a terrible thing to say, but... No, uh, it's, no, I mean, no. But you just like... It was fault. like... You were desensitized. You need, yeah, you were desensitized. You needed to... This is 10 years ago, 10, yeah. 15 You're years ago. better You ever now. see... Because slaps are a thing, right? You ever see a slap that, like, is... Like, well, Brandon Iron used to do one called Slap Happy, where he beat the shit out of the girls before they have sex. Oh. And... I think some people feel uncomfortable because like hmm. there's no way those girls are into it, but some of them definitely into rough sex. But some of them probably were not. Sometimes they pretend like they're into it because they want to get extra job and money. So those are really hard thing to see sometimes. But yeah. uh, wasn't there like some famous Hollywood actress who recently said she, she she's really into hard sex manhandle and she got in trouble for being honest? Kind of strange that it's really refreshing to hear a woman saying what she really wants. And she say it, and people get mad at her. Yeah. yeah, the world is so hypocritical. But happy birthday, Ashley! Ashley, <laughs> okay, happy birthday! Oh yeah, they're so dead inside those two. Where's my sugar mamas around? <clears throat> I need one. What do you there think? There you go. Well, that's more of a message to you. Yeah, I mean, I like what he's putting out there, and I find it's him attractive. Direct. And you said you like direct. I messages. like direct, so I might take him up. You know, I like he's got. I mean, his hair's doing something. Something is he upside is down? He might be hanging. His face is very Jesus red. I don't he know. looks squishier. Yeah, um, he does. He definitely has a look. <laughs> um, Yoshi, we have to wrap up. Okay, but listen, man, it is always a treat to see you. Thank, thank you for all. Let me do it. Yeah, um, Yoshi. Wow. If, if it's okay to plug a few things. Yeah, uh, of course. Yes. Please sure. go ahead. So um, I'm doing the French in Scotland. Yeah. August 4th or 26th. Name of the show is Adult Content. And so I'm going to talk about my 30, 25, 30 years in that business. You're there right now. It's the, this is, um, you're there right now. So if you have not yet seen the show, um, it's, uh, what's it called? Edinburgh it's called French Adult Fest. Content. Yeah, that's the name of the show in French. And you're covering your your years especially the last decade that you were in it yeah a lot you know that uh, organization doctors without border yeah yeah i'm pervert without a border okay. yeah so i've been it's using beautiful. my knowledge to go um the world and this uh, i think this terrorism book with kareem is going to be important because i think sex is a very difficult subject matter i think you and uh, dr Drew do a wonderful job thank you and i think because it's so difficult people avoid it but I'm sorry, but terrorism, there's some sexual factor that people are missing and not talking about. So um, I want to cover a little bit of that. They could find information at the adultcontent69.com. Cool. So a bunch of stories are there. Um, Great. I've written. I wish I could see this show. And, uh, and lastly, my friend Rosie Trans opening a hotel. I'll be there opening week, the318hotel.com. And if they want me to help them do some crazy sex history tour in New Orleans, I'll be doing it. So that's it. Fantastic. The great Yoshi, everybody. Um, It's wonderful to see you. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for watching. And we will see you next time.
bitches on that makeup one. A bitch where? I'm so cute as shit. Get the fuck up out of here. I might look a little bit more ching chong, ching chong. But don't get me fucked up, bitch. I'm still hood as shit and we'll fuck your ass up. Okay, you wanna fuck with my money, huh? You wanna fuck with my money? Um, yeah, she has uh, a lot of videos that she makes and just puts up. Yeah, and they always do. They yeah. always do. I, work. I met the mentally ill. Nine. I didn't know what color. I haven't seen this. How, how would I, think, I know? I, I think, think you're, you're the one. I think has. you understand what color no. we're talking about here. <laughs> I think you're the one with that. Uh, not me. I didn't know she was. I don't know which color she is. Okay. Okay. All I know is she's probably crazy, like they all are. They certainly are. No. no. Yeah, this is a lady who you can't imagine what she looks like. I, I don't know. She could be Asian. She could. Of course be. she's Asian. Of course she's Asian. Asian. that full episode of your mom's house are your jeans as high and tight as it can be i doubt it watch some more clips dude look at that one watch that one right here or maybe here maybe here maybe, <laughs> maybe you should subscribe that way every time a new video gets posted you'll be notified stay in the know jeans subscribe now